All right, check this out. I provided a community poll with this question. Which display resolution allows the laptop to run cooler, Full HD or Ultra HD? 300 votes later, let's see how this works. So let's find out using this 15-inch HP Omen with a 6-core i7, the RTX 2070 Super Max-Q, and an OLED Ultra HD display. On our left will be 4K results, and on our right will be 1080p results. Starting with Overwatch, Ultra Settings at 100% Resolution Scaling, I like this title to showcase these results because this hardware can play this title at 4K over 60fps. With Ultra HD resolution in this particular title, the 2070 Super Max Q will often dynamically boost past 80 watts to 100 watts because the CPU can stay under 20 watts under these circumstances. Of course, Full HD looks much different. Our CPU is doing all it can in this title to maximize GPU utilization, but it's just not cutting it. Pretty fun to compare thermal performance, especially as you see wattage on the GPU up 25%, but running cooler since the CPU is running at a much lower wattage. Of course, this is the byproduct of a shared cooling solution. Lowering thermals on one part certainly affects the other. Now let's explore Cold War on Nuketown at 4K and 1080p. While 4K is not yielding an ideal frame rate, the GPU is consistently 3 degrees Celsius cooler and the CPU is 10 degrees Celsius cooler as it pulls 12 watts less versus Full HD. Full HD is very CPU bound. As a result, expect higher CPU wattage and temperatures. When this happens, your GPU thermals often move up since these parts typically share heat pipes. While this is fun to see, this also begins to showcase my biggest fear for gaming laptops. Without faster CPU cores, 1080p and even 1440p exploit a weakness with our current gaming PC hardware. Moving to 4K panels for laptops looks like it might make sense based on these thermal results and GPU utilization, but this just hits the reset button on our frame rates. So if the future is Ultra HD but with higher refresh rates, then it's only a matter of time before we get the next jump in GPU performance, and without a large jump in core performance from Intel and AMD, the CPU bottleneck starts over again.